Hi there, in this video I have a go at machining the cylinder. Now I've never tried anything like this before, uh, so it should be quite interesting. Um, now, uh, one sort of uh, backstop guarantee I've got is if I totally mess it up, um, I think I can buy another cylinder for around about £20 including delivery. So uh, anyway, <laughs> let's see how we get on. Okay, so I bought this four-jaw chuck especially for this job, and to be honest, I've uh, not used one before, and it's taken me about two hours to uh, get the cylinder lined up. But I'm quite happy now that I've got it correct because um, all the straight sides are actually perpendicular with the front of the chuck, and I also used when setting it up this live center here. So I brought the live center up to where the hole is um, to get a, you know a reasonable idea that it was central and now I've just put this dial indicator on here just to double check and to be honest um, bearing in mind this this hasn't been machined yet uh, it, there's only about 15 thou difference so I'm really happy that uh, you know it, it's all straight and uh, we're good to go. Also, as a double check, I've just put the dial indicator on this front face here, and the run out is about seven thou. So again, happy with that. Okay, so the actual cylinder length is one point seven six five. Of an inch and uh, it needs to be reduced down to 1.625 so the difference being 0 0.140 so if you divide that by two you get 70 thou off each side so uh, I need to take 70 thou off this flange and later on I'll be taking 70 thou off the other flange so I'm going to be running at uh, 200 rpm and um, taking 10 thou off at a time. Okay, so uh, Tubal Cane suggests uh, using a taper gauge to um, calculate the size of the bore. Now um, that's where I'm aiming for which is 0.625 of an inch and that mark there is what I've got at the moment and that works out at 0.552 of an inch so that's 73 thou um, to come off. Um, so 73 divided by 2 is around about 36 thou. Okay, so I'll be taking off 10 thou at a time and uh, running at uh, 200 rpm. And using the power feed. So uh, going by this taper gauge, I think I've got probably about 12 thou to go, so 6 thou on each side. And what I've decided to do is to do uh, two passes at 3 thou, um, but I've taken the tin coated insert off and I'm using this insert that's uh, specifically made for aluminium. Uh, so I'm hoping I'll get a, a better finish on the inside using that. So I'll take two passes at three thou.
Okay, so uh, I think we're there within a couple of thou. The finish on the inside feels really good, so I'm happy with that. So what I need to do now is to take it off the four jaw chuck, put a three jaw chuck on here, uh, create some kind of an arbor with the same diameter as as the bore, and then put this end on the arbor, and then finish off this flange on the other side. Okay, so this is a piece of aluminium bar, and I've used some emery paper just to bring it down to the right uh, dimension, so I've got a nice fit here. And uh, the idea will be to super glue it on here temporarily, and then I'll uh, face this end off and bring it down to the correct length. But I'll do that off camera. So here we need to uh, mark out the port face in relation to the bore. So I've put the bar back in um, the cylinder um, and I'm using this vise to hold it parallel. Now Tubal Kane suggests using some V-blocks but I've not got V-blocks. Um, but I think this should work and I've used this uh, little set square here to make sure that the side is perpendicular. Um, now here I set my gauge at height to zero at the top of the bar and now I need to add 5 sixteenths to it and mark right round here to define how far down to machine it. So I've squared up the cylinder in the vise and the uh, port face is horizontal and I just need to mill down to the line as indicated. So having milled the port face, it's um, a matter of following the same procedure for the mounting face. So I've made sure that it's perpendicular with the port face, uh, but this time we need to add an eighth of an inch um, above the mandrel. So here I'm just machining the mounting face. Well this part of the process really uh, confused me to be honest. Um, this is um, starting work on the steam passages. And I couldn't really work it out from the drawing but I, I got there in the end. Um, it talks about using a 7 seconds of an inch slot drill. Now, I've not got one of those. All I've got is a 4 flue end mill so I'm going to have to use that. It's a 6mm so it's sort of close. and. The edge, the right hand side edge of that cutter needs to be um, 7 sixty-fourths from this edge. So it needs to move from the edge, the inside edge of the cylinder, across. 
by 7 64ths of an inch and then we do a plunge cut of 94 thou so we'll give it a try reset the DRO look at 94 thou So I need to repeat this process on the other side. Well this is the uh, setup for drilling one of the steam passages. Um, now the vise uh, needs to be tilted by around about 14 degrees. So I just put some packing under it, clamped it, um, it's pretty rock solid. Um, obviously the cylinder is perpendicular in the vise. I've checked the angle of 14 degrees by just resting that on there and just looking at the back of the mill that's pretty much 14 degrees. So um, let's give it a try. The idea is you drill down by about 5 eighths of an inch and then it should break through. So fingers crossed. Half an inch, so another eighth to go. And that's broken through. Interesting. Okay, so uh, finally this is drilling the uh, exhaust passage through to the port. Um, now this is a 3.5mm drill bit. Um, now what I won't do is to drill and tap it uh, at this moment in time because I don't know what type of connector I'm going to use. So I'll leave that until later. So finally, using this piece of wet and dry on a really flat surface, um, I'm just going to clean up the port face. Well, that was uh, somewhat easier than I thought it would have been. Um, I was concerned about boring the cylinder and drilling the steam passages, um, but it actually seems to have worked okay. Uh, I do I do struggle a little bit with uh, two-dimensional drawings and trying to envisage how it will look in real life, um, but I think I got there in the end. So um, my next video will cover hopefully the steam chest, the steam chest covers, and the cylinder covers. Anyway, I hope you like uh, the results so far.